All right, it's now four minutes after seven, and it's time for us to get into the State of the Nation. A quick reintroduction of the panel that we have this morning. To my extreme left, we have Joe Mutambo, who is a former member of parliament for Mwingi Central. We have Edwin Sifuna, who is the Secretary General for Orange Democratic Movement. And last but not least, Embro Sweda, who is an advocate of the High Court. And today, we want to look at several things, starting, of course, with the uh, Kenya at 55, where the president yesterday adorned in his regalia of the chief, um, or rather the, the commander-in-chief of the disciplined forces. But more importantly is to look through where we are as a country and uh, possibly the progress that we have made. Kenya at 55. Now. Uh, one of the things that I noticed yesterday was a comparison of Uhuru Kenyatta in this attire and his father in the same attire. But away from, you know, just the color, the substance of where we are as a country. And I'll start with you, Joe Mutambo. Uh, the president, the original, um, or rather, let me say, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's father promised us three main things uh, when we uh, got independence. That was poverty eradication, uh, er eradication of illiteracy, and also... Um, what was the third one? I forget now. But there were three main things that we, we, we had been promised. Your hunger, hunger yes, hunger yes. eradication. Yes. Um, where we are as a country, is it where we should be at 55, given that we are still struggling? We've just looked at uh, education. Uh, we still haven't got the education system right. We're still fighting with uh, things like corruption, which have been plundered completely in this country. Your assessment in terms of where we are as a country? I would say we should not be where we are today. 55 years is, is long and it's a good time to have changed our country. There are countries which have done uh, better than us, uh, given a good example, Malaysia and others. Uh, I don't feel that we are in a good position to, uh, I mean, to brag ourselves. Um, the, 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 the problem being that uh, most of this has been uh, caused by, by politicians. I, I'm saying that being a as politician, as, yes, as a contributor to this, we, we, we have dragged this country backwards. Another thing is the corruption <coughs> in the country, because you, there's no way you can fight uh, anchor, there's no way you can fight development. You want to develop a country and you are looting from the same. That one cannot happen. So the things which were promised by the president, uh, Kenyatta, we could not realize that because uh, corruption was rampant and even today is still rampant. Um, um, politics still not good in our country. Uh, she has the question, uh, what do we expect uh, if uh, Kenyatta today visits uh, uh, Kisum? And to me, that does not matter. What matters to me is what will happen after Uhuru Kenyatta. It's how Sifuna will behave the day Uhuru Kenyatta will retire. That is what worries me most. I'm worried to, 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 to see uh, a country, a united country, because when you see politicians turn 360 degrees, because Sifuna has pronounced this, and all their followers, they have turned 360 degrees at the same time, and no one is questioning where are we going in this direction, then there is a problem. We need to ask ourselves a lot of questions, and that is my worry. So if today Kenyatta, or Kenyatta retires, my worry would be, are we going to go with that speed? The speed, the momentum he has given us, are we going to push on with it, fighting corruption, being unified Kenyan, understanding one another, embracing and developing the, the democracy now which we are seeing today, whereby I could fight today with Sufuna, Sufuna takes the seat and tomorrow I shake his hand. Are we going to see that Momentum going forward? On. This is my question. Okay. This is the question I would All right, like. let me come to you, Sifuna, and it's good that he's here, so he's going to answer those questions <laughs> when it comes to, you know, taking a 360 uh, turn. But, uh, poverty eradication, fighting illiteracy, and access to health care, the three things that we had been promised by our founding fathers. Yes. Do you feel like we're making um, what I'd call a substantial progress towards that? Are we happy with where we are as a, as a country? I don't think so, because uh, if uh, somebody who was here in uh, 1960, were to wake up today 
and look at the state in which we are. I mean, there's very little in terms of change that has happened. We are still talking about those uh, three things. We were just discussing uh, the issue of uh, our education system. Education we, system. We have not even gotten that right. Mm -hmm. uh, there are still very high levels of illiteracy in the country. When you come to poverty, I mean, it is a known fact that we haven't moved an inch. The, uh, there, was, uh, there was somebody who was talking about uh, a country of 10, 10 millionaires and uh, 10 million poor people. Uh, during the independence struggle, and uh, the situation is still the same up to today. Uh, we were in Kiambu, I think, on uh, Monday, and we were at this uh, uh, children's development center at uh, Kangoya PCA Church. And the stories that you hear from there were quite heartbreaking, that uh, we have a very uh, high number of uh, uh, children from poor backgrounds and families who have no way of uh, supporting themselves in terms of uh, an education and even a meal, that they come to that particular center uh, on uh, every Saturday. And that is the first time that they get to eat a balanced uh, meal throughout the week. That one meal that they get at that center on Saturday. Uh, it's a big problem, and it is a problem that permeates every, uh, uh, every community <coughs> in this country, every region. So that uh, uh, for us to pretend that uh, we have made any, uh, any serious steps uh, after independence, it, it is to lie to ourselves. Mm. So that uh, when we begin this discussion, and I'm happy to bring in the, the, the entire issue of uh, the Building Bridges Initiative, because uh, even that initiative was drawn out of a reflection. Uh, on what steps have we made as a country uh, from the time of independence and how is it that we keep going round and round in, in circles, dealing with the same issues every time, uh, and we are not able to, to make, make progress. Uh, progress. Mm. So I am happy that uh, uh, the two leaders, uh, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta and Honorable Raila Odinga, paused for a moment to ask the question, where did the rain start beating us, and identified the issues that have uh, led us into this uh, cul-de-sac over the time uh, that we have been independent and proposed uh, a debate or a discussion on having uh, a resolution to these issues, whether it be uh, tribalism, inequity, uh, uh, corruption. All of these issues have been put on the table. And if we have an honest discussion as Kenyans about them, we might just have a solution to, to, to take our country forward. All right, Weda, your thoughts? And I mean, uh, <coughs> when we look at where we were, are we, have we really made progress um, when we quantify? We certainly have improved in some areas. Uh, but when we try and put it in terms of uh, the amount of uh, 55 years, when we look at our health care, we've devolved our counties, but when you look at the uh, access to health care, for example, are you happy with the progress that we've made? I think uh, um, we've made very, very major milestones if we are comparing ourselves to uh, people around, countries around. But if we are looking at the ideal situation, then we would say we have done about 40%. Why do I say so? Is uh, the founding fathers uh, did not get some certain foundation um, bricks right. When we got independence, the country was fairly united. People were together. Uh, somebody could run for an election in Nairobi or Nakuru. It did not matter whether you were Kikuyu or Kisi or Luo and whatever. Then we laid this, uh, the, the, the bricks of negative ethnicity. It started growing. It uh, <coughs> multiplied into rivalries and so on. And you see the same rivals between President Uru and Honorable Raila Odinga. It was planted at independence. Again, we went in for free economy. Uh, capitalist economy, which was good, but with it, there is the corruption that oils it. Now, that tree also has been growing. It's been growing over the years uh, to the extent that we worship wealth. It doesn't matter how much educated you are. It doesn't matter how much talented you are. It doesn't matter whether you are the top surgeon in the country. At the end of the day, we'll ask you, Getonga, how much you have? If we find you have nothing, then we say, that's a useless doctor. Right. So that tree also, we oiled it. We watered it and it has grown. And you can see today we are crying about corruption more than Tanzania is crying about it because of the principle of private ownership. Mali, so we went to Mali, Auma, you grew up to make Mali, Amutu. So some of the trees that we planted are slowly consuming the gains we have made. So today at 55, we are worse off than we were at 25. I remember during the, the, the 10th anniversary of Nyawera, I, I was now slightly older, 
the president, President Kenyatta, died when I was in class two. That time, uh, you'd go to a private, uh, to a public hospital. I would, you would go to a, pub, a public hospital, and you'd be treated. There would be medicine. There would be all these things. Uh, now, and then the services were also fairly good. You'll go there, you are served quickly, as if I can see. Today, I don't know which public hospital you can go for, go to and be treated, and, and whether the drugs, if they are there, mm. they are real drugs or they are um, the fake ones. Mm. So we are so mixed up, so bad that we need uh, some form of reincarnation, reincarnation that goes beyond a handshake. But we thank God that we are trying to rediscover each other mm. by way of handshake. Now you can see a Secretary General next to a, a Jubilee Big Week, and, and, and we, we thank God for it. <laughs> 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 All right, and uh, you bring in the aspect of the handshake, then that, of course, is also a point of focus today, yes. given that Uhuru Kenyatta is going to be going to Kisumu and Nyanza for the first time since the handshake. But I'd like us to listen in to what some of the leaders have had to say regarding that particular trip and what, as Kenyans, we would expect, because... Where we are today as a country, all of you have agreed that we are not where we should be. You're not happy with the progress, but it's down to leadership. Do we have the right leadership now that is taking us to the right direction? Some have called it canon. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, the promised land. But where are we headed? Let's listen in to some of the leaders first. We not just bequeath to our children a bigger bank account and a bigger motor vehicle. We must bequeath to them values. And it is those values that the Right Honorable Raila Molo Dinga na Uhuru wanataka kuelekezea wananchi wa Kenya. Ninaomba tukifika Kisumu vile mumekaribisha Raila hapa na kule Nyanza pia tutakaribisha His Excellency Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. Thank you very much. Na manisha handshake kinafanya nini? Kazi. Na kwa sababu ni mara yangu ya kwanza tangu niwe katibu mkuu usimama hapa kiambu. Nataka nifuate mfano wa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta wakati aliutubia bunge akasema kama kuna jambo lolote alisema wakati wa campaign likauma mutu akasema tumsamehe I want to confirm on behalf of ODM that we forgive Uhuru Kenyatta for anything that he might have said during the campaign that hurt us and I want to follow that example by saying your Excellency, Mr. President, I know those of us in ODM, especially the young bloods like myself and Babu Owino, we said a few things that might have hurt you. I want to say, Paul Esan, ilikuwani wakati wa siyasi. Is that not the Kenya we want? And to be here to celebrate that handshake in this church on behalf of the children, that is the future of this country. And I end up by saying, if we the politicians and the others become committed and sincere to this handshake, Kenya will go a long way. Mambo ya ukosefu wa kazi kwa vijana ufukara katika taifa letu. Ndio yao tutaandika pamoja tukasema tutasuluhisha. Na ndio kasema tutakaa kuja pamoja kusema kama hiyo tayari twende tukashikane mkono tukaelekana mkono. Tusarebiane. Hanshi. 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 Sasa tunakuja Kisumu tumesaidia mahali zingine Juzi tulikuwa kakameka kwa kandili ya mashujadi. Sasa kumora ya kwanza, tangu, tisa, mizwa tatu, unakuja kisumu kwa moja. Kwa 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 All right, and uh, let me start with you, Edin Sifuna. You have a very good apology you gave there, and I'm sure there was a lot of uproar, but that apology would not mean much if it is not followed by actions. What actions should we expect from you, the youth, uh, ODM, and everybody else who's part of this handshake following up that apology? Because the handshake is something we've talked about for a long time, but 
there needs to be action that follows it. Absolutely. I mean, uh, apologies are beginnings. Uh, you have to acknowledge that uh, uh, there's things that uh, you've not done uh, in the best right. possible way. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we were following the example that was set by the president himself. And uh, even on the day that he made that apology in, in parliament, we saw it as a, a good beginning, a good start, because uh, many of our supporters, I will speak this uh, 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 without fear of contradiction, many of our supporters still need to hear certain things uh, from the president. On the very same day that he, he made that apology uh, uh, for pronouncements that might have been made in the heat of the campaign that were not necessarily uh, unifying, uh, he also went ahead, he was speaking in parliament, and uh, uh, he you know, extolled uh, the work that had been done by the police during that particular period. And many of us thought that it was out of tune and out of step of uh, uh, the, the, the theme of the day. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, understand those of us who still have reservations that we would like to hear certain things. We have not had one of them. Are those who still has reservations? There, 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 there are many things that we would like to hear and see. Mm -hmm. uh, for me personally, even uh, those people who are, for instance, saying they would like to hear the president address uh, the issue of the conduct of the police during that election, mm -hmm. uh, whether indeed uh, they were, uh, you know, overstepping uh, their power and their mandate as, as, as people who are supposed to secure the public, uh, you know, uh, we have to address the issue of the, the many deaths that, that were experienced during that particular period. And for people to demand that conversation, I don't think that it is um, a threat to the newfound unity or that, because any newfound unity, any real unity has to be founded on truth. And um, that is why even when we have this uh, truth reconciliation, uh, justice reconciliation commissions, the first word in that TGRC is actually truth, mm -hmm. that it is the basis of everything that else that, that follows. Mm -hmm. So for us, we are very sincere that we are open to having a conversation about how we have wronged each other in the past and that uh, we address that in a manner that will ensure that it doesn't happen again and that we're able to move forward together as a country. Okay. Joe Mutambo, what is it that you're expecting or what would you expect from this trip that the president is making to Nyanza that would give you value for that handshake? How fast before I even go there? How, how I wish the statement, the statement made by my good Secretary General, Sifuna, that they are sincere would stand forever and ever, that they are sincere. I would want also to ask myself, what would Sufuna say today had Raila not said we are going to shake hands? Would he be like Moses Kuria, whereby Moses Kuria is a daredevil and he would take a plane and go to Kisumu, whether you stone him or not? Would Sufuna go to Katundu uh, without a handshake? That is the question I'm asking myself. How I wish that whatever we are talking about today, it's coming from the bottom of our hearts. Is it coming because Baba said so? and the whole shook hands, or is it coming from ourselves? Is it our own cohesion, or are we being coerced? These are the questions which are running through my mind, mm. and I get confused. But now, with, but, but now with, with that confusion, what is, it that would, what is it that you would need to see on the ground what, what that I would convince you that it's coming from the heart? Actually, I don't care much what I see on the ground. What I care most is the outcome of it. I don't, today, you... I'll see people going there. I'll see a very big crowd. I'm also headed to Kisumu, by the way. I'm going to catch my... I'm going there. Uh, but that is not an issue. Going to Kisumu today, to me, does not matter. It's a good thing for president because either way, he's the president of the Republic of Kenya. And he'll go to Kisumu whether you like him or not. He was there with uh, uh, others, whether he was invited by Uru or by, 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 by Raila or others. He will still go there. What? we get out of faith is what is important. What we get out of the handshake is what, I, what worries me most. And I do not want to expect a situation whereby after the handshake, let's say now tomorrow, Raila says, I am going to vie, and the world says, okay, fine, you are, a, I mean, you can vie because you are Kenyan, and, but I'm not going to support you, I'm going to support the deputy president because he is my deputy. Then I see Sifuna, not recognizing who as a president of Kenya by then, <laughs> then that is what worries him. Mm. Uh, and uh, these uh, are the issues we need to look into. And I want my good friend to be, I mean, to be the ambassador 
of what he's talking about now. Let, that, let me, that. Uh, give, and give, and him, I want give him a chance. Word for it. Mm -hmm. I want to take his word for it because he's a young man and I'm sure he, he has a very bright future ahead of him. Thank I, you. I want to take, I want to, to, not only him, even other politicians, because when I spoke about 360 degrees, you knew and every Kenyan knew who was the worst uh, politician, I mean, who was the worst enemy of Uru Kenyatta in this parliament? One million yambo. And the following morning, when there was a handshake, she turned 360 degrees you know, and she became a defender number one. Uh, which is a good thing to, 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 to change sides. Uh, but are we going to hold into the, Okay, to, I'll, I'll, I'll allow uh, Sifuna maybe to... I think, Mwishimu, I, I, I get what you're saying. First of all, I want to tell you that uh, <coughs> it is public record that not all, all of us was, were in support of that initial move to have the handshake. In fact, it is the reason why many of us in the party were kept in the dark. I mean, Rail Odinga knows all of us, and he knows our position on some of these things. Some of us had held very hardline positions, and in fact, if we were consulted, that handshake probably would never have would happened, have because happened. we would have cancelled him against it. Because at that particular point, everybody was steeped in the positions that they had taken. And I want to say that uh, sometimes leadership also takes for you to be led. We have a leader in the party, and he took that particular step, although many of us were skeptical, and many still have uh, questions on the sincerity of the other side. But from where we come from, from uh, the discussions that I've had with my party leader, I can see the sincerity in attempting a different way of resolving the problems that have bedeviled this country. For me, I used to go to Kiambu even before the handshake. It was under very acrimonious uh, uh, circumstances when I was in Gidunguri trying to get Miguna out of the police cells. Uh, we had uh, riots outside the police station, tires were lit. That was me then. But the, it is the reason why when I stood in that particular church in Kiambu, it was the first time I was going back there after that particular incident. And that is what I say, that indeed we have been shown that things can be done differently. differently. If indeed the people who we were all supporting and uh, we thought were uh, the greatest of enemies, can actually put this aside and say, let us have an honest discussion. It is okay for you to doubt. It is okay because of the history that we have mm. for you to ask questions whether indeed this thing is sincere, is it going oh, to no. work. It is, there is no guarantee in anything that you do in life, uh, Mutambu. <laughs> Even today, you waking up and being on this show, there is no guarantee. I pray to God that you get to Kisumu, but there is no guarantee. There is nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there is nothing. And by the way, mm. I want to say this, that the president has been to Kisumu, even during the campaign. And the people of Kisumu always showed up to listen to him. There was hardly any incident that uh, is worth talking about during the campaign when the president was visiting this area. The difference is that he is showing up this particular time on the same platform as a leader of, uh, of the opposition. That alone, that imagery alone, is something that we should be proud of and say we can actually demonstrate to our people mm. that beyond politics we are still brothers as Kenyans. Absolutely. Weda? I think, I think the, the people are now yapping up and down. Let me speak to you as the person who has been in the desert. <laughs> you understand, 2013, I was running for semi seat on TNA. And I was telling my people that even if you want power, the way to power is through President Uru. He is going to be president, and is the way. Let us uh, have bridges between the Luos and the Kikus and others together instead of fighting. They said, this is a traitor. And uh, you had to walk in with a, a team of security, both yourself and the youths and so on. In 2017, I lost property. They went to my home, burnt a few things. All I was saying is that this is the right way. So when I see that there's a throwing of uh, hearts and the President Uru and Hon Raila now see that where um, people should go is togetherness. The rift that burns this country is the rift between Uhuru Kenyatta, the Kekui nation more so, and the Luo nation. Once you match them together and we stop this war, it would be good for the country. And we have seen the handshake. So what I'm saying, it is not about uh, land or about roads or about health care, it is about the goodwill. And I see the goodwill in the heart of President Uru. I see it in Honorable Raya Lodinga. Once they retain the goodwill, the rest are for all of us Kenyans. We do not want to see a goodwill that is meant to favor Luonyanza and to leave out Ukambani and to leave out. We want a goodwill that brings in this country into prosperity. So I keep on saying that 
the president and uh, the, the prime minister, as they continue to work together, the country cools down. As they cool down, it gives leeway for development to go on. So, so do you have any expectations of Uhuru Kenyatta's trip this time? Because like um, um, Sifuna has mentioned, it's the first time that they're sharing that platform in Luonyanza after the handshake. First are all, there something that we should expect out of that trip? There are. Uh, one, uh, you'll find that because of the peace, the hostility uh, against uh, the Lua nation in government comes down. The hostility against the president. There has been hostility. Even if he goes there, he goes there in full power. But he's not in the hearts of people. Now that goes down. The hostility against the Kiku nation, against, uh, by the Kiku nation, against Honorable Rail Odinga, cools down. Now that cooling down allows business to move. Now I can tell you Kikuyus can go to Kisumu and invest. Before, before the, the, when, when, when Wakata Sifuna were really hot, you would go and do business in the morning and you leave because you stay there, they check this, <laughs> they, they chest away quite a number of people. So okay. there will also be a few developmental issues because the president will not just go there and... Uh, and, 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 and that... I, I, I think yes. my senior is oversimplifying. I doubt that the problem in this country has always been or can be reduced down to a rivalry of two tribes because there's 42 others. And even if you resolve the rivalry between one, there will be another uh, a, a tribe setting a, a, a against each other. I remember uh, during the 2013 election, we were being told that Kenyans had been united simply because the leader of, uh, uh, or the perceived leader of a Kalenjin had agreed to be the, the running mate of a, of a Kikuyu leader. I mean, that is an oversimplification of things. For me, my struggle has always been, how is it possible that somebody who supports a different political uh, ideology or movement and uh, myself can see things so differently. How is it that I see a newspaper here and he sees a train? I mean, w the gap was, has been so wide. so wide. And what I appreciate now is that there is an opportunity for us because they've been speaking from a different platform and we speak from a different platform. We can now sit together with WEDA and ask WEDA, how is it possible that you see a train? How is it possible that I see a newspaper and you see something else? It is possible that some of us just take positions because we want to take positions. For instance, I am very happy. We have fought on this very platform over the past five years on whether there is actually political goodwill in the, in the, in in the, the, the war against corruption. Mm. So when I sit together with Weda and he actually accepts that there hasn't been that goodwill and that we are seeing it in certain cases and in, not in others, mm. this is what we've been seeing. That, that, that's progress. But that uh, Sifuna, progress. the question then remains, if we reflect back, for instance, on uh, the elections that we had, there are yes. people who lost lives. Yes. The reason why part of, uh, or rather part of the reasons why we had ODM, for example, yes. uh, go up in arms and literally uh, stop business, it was because they were fighting for a cause. Yes. What happens to that cause? Does it then get forgotten with the handshake or is it put under the carpet? And that's why I'm asking, what does this trip have? What does it carry that assures that person that lost their loved one during that fight that the handshake has not forgotten them first of all you cannot claim that uh, any of those issues have been swept under the, uh, the carpet in fact they have been put on the table if you look at the mou that was uh, entered into between uh, uhuru kenyatta and raila odinga it has put those issues squarely on the table if we are talking about uh, the, the people who lost lives. Why did those lives have to be lost? Mm. The issue of the divisive elections is on the table. It is actually the first issue on the, in the MOU that it is possible for us to have a discussion on why every time there is a, a political contest, lives have to be lost. It is a question that is on the table, Mike. It has not been swept under the carpet. You have heard uh, the clip that was played there uh, 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 by the, the, the party leader himself mm. talking about uh, how elections are conducted, but, but the, when, we, the say, management when, of when we say it's still on the table, yeah. what, so, what difference is here, there apart here, from a piece of paper that we here, have, that we have also on the TJRC, that what, we have in the Ndungu report, that what, we have in the Waki report? Here's what you need to understand. And now I want to address that specific question of the people who have been, uh, who lost their lives. As I have told you, we have had positions where we cannot see the same thing. That is the discussion we want to have right now, to bring the people in Jubilee to understand that you can have a protest in Nairobi without anybody losing their lives. That it is possible for us to have a police force that serves people and that the matters that we saw happening during that particular point uh, in time, up to today there are people in Jubilee who will not admit that police going into uh, people's houses and bludgeoning uh, kids <laughs> to death is something that we should condemn. But they will come around. 
Mm. Even weather, we'll accept that that is not something that we, we want to see in this country. Okay. It is yeah. possible for us to yeah. have let, let me very from, heated on, on campaigns Mtambo. without anybody yeah. dying. Uh, Mtambo. Uh, Sifuna, let me tell you this. This problem is not only in Kisumu. It is everywhere. Absolutely. This mistrust is not, is, is not about Raila and, and Hur. We, we thank more, I would want to thank my president for accepting to meet Raila because I remember he's the man who said, Nusumukate aku, wacha Nusumukate, ata moja kuna. But he swallowed those words. I want to thank him for that. Why do you say Sakuna? <laughs> I want to thank him mm. for that. Number two, the man we are talking to here is a victim, Joe Matambo. Why? Because <laughs> I advocated for Uhuru Kenyatta in Ukambani. But just a month ago, you had a kingpin from Ukambani saying, Sasa Mimi ni mutu ya mukono. And these are the issues we are auditing. Okay? Where are you taking us? Are you doing so because of your own convenience or for the community and for the nation? I would want it to be for the convenience of the nation and the community, but not for yourself. If it turns out that I want to be Mutua Mukono because of myself, then that is a very bad trade for the country. Then when we are not fair, we are back again at it. If we could cut a fate and what, what Uhuru and Rela has planted and have it nurture, grow, so that when Sifuna sees Mutambu standing or sees uh, my good friend in Seme vying with the Jubilee, you don't perceive him as an enemy, but just a person like you is trying to get... Opinion. Yes, it's only that we are in different parties, mm. but you are Kenyans. Mm. If we could treat ourselves this way, then this country, actually what we are talking about, what have we achieved, we could triple what we have achieved. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We cannot leave that discussion and say we have not achieved anything in the country. Uh, I mean, as a country, we have achieved too much. Because even the independence of, of media has come along. Multi party has come along. We have uh, achieved something. We cannot say we have not achieved too much. Mm -hmm. But if we could as well achieve this now, we remove the political uh, uh, temperature from individuals. Because the moment it is only one person who controls the politics of Nyanza, it is one person who controls the politics of Ukambani, it is one person who controls the politics of, uh, of uh, Kikuyuland, then this country will still be organized. Mm -hmm. It will never change. All it right. will change in the moment you will start thinking for yourself and don't let anybody think for you. Okay. We'll need yes. to wind up and I'll uh, start yes. with you, whether yes. it's an opportunity that we have as Kenyans to make it right. Yes. It's not the first time that we've had this opportunity. Yes. We had uh, Kofi Annan come and we had uh, Raila Odinga shake hands again with Kibaki, but somehow we seem to lose the plot. What's going to be different this time? I think what we need, what is on the table is goodwill. Those are the things like which police kicked who and did what and all these things. <laughs> but whether about. we can't simplify that much, people lost lives. Absolutely. Yes, but they lost lives and the lives are gone and buried. Yes, we... and, and, and those families still, the, the, those who lost breadwinners, those who yes. lost their sons, we cannot just yes. uh, say that that if, is okay. Let me tell you, if we are to go back to open up things, then we will never end the But the that feuds. might be the reason why we never get to the bottom of it, because we never address some of those things. Thank so you. when come another five years, thank another li some other lives will you. be lost, and then we'll say, okay, now, no, let's, I, let's I, pull I, down I the God, temperature. I thank God that the president and the prime minister are not listening to many of you who want to open all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, Mandela said, and Desmond Tutu said, that uh, you, if you look back, you cannot heal. Forgiveness is about forgetting. You 55 forget. Fifty-five years after. Yes. I think that is a wrong. Yes. Approach. So those of you who still want us to open things. It's not a matter of opening whether it's the uh, question of whether we are going to deal. Justice. Is, things, justice has to be done and be seen to be done. Justice. The dead are dead. Let us accept that fact. There have been things which have been wrong done wrongly. Apologies have been granted. So what are you those saying? Of, what, what, are you what, saying to saying, those, what are you saying to those families who lost their loved ones the ones, the for families, the cause of justice? Uh, the, fam, the ones who lost their ones, I say, please forgive. May the Lord give you a heart to continue forgiving. <laughs> I'm telling our leaders, put goodwill on the table. Look to the future. Let us forget 
the past. If we go back to the past, we'll never move. We want to look today and how we move forward. That's why we, that's how we want President Uru to move. That's how we want Raila to move. These are the guys who want to look at which uh, the sugar was stolen from which corner and who was killed. We will go back to pre-independence and that will never give us healing. The right. Lord wants you to forgive yeah. and forget. You know, the, 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 only the, only thing, the only thing I will say is that uh, although my senior likes to describe himself as a jubilee big week, I am happy that he is not center uh, of this uh, handshake business because that is not the attitude that uh, for us as a party we have gone into the handshake with. We believe uh, there is no help in you uh, putting a band-aid over a, a wound. You have to cauterize it, you have to squeeze out everything that is in there to give a chance of that wound healing. Heal. For us, we have said we will approach this thing with sincerity. It is not the intention of ODM or our party leader to cover anything uh, up. We have to have an honest conversation. The beauty of it is that there is, you should not be scared to have a conversation uh, just because it is a difficult conversation. In fact, the affairs of this country, if we are going to have uh, to write them, you have to have difficult conversations, Mike. And if you look at the nine issues in the MOU, Dealing with corruption is not an, uh, uh, it's a very ugly affair. It is not something that is pretty. Mm. Dealing with the issue of in inequity and inequality, the distribution of resources and opportunity in this country, it is not an easy discussion. But that discussion has to be had if we are, uh, unless we are lying to ourselves. Okay. So for us, we are very clear in our minds, mm -hmm. we will not pop over anything. We will have an honest discussion about our own. From, from where I sit, uh, Sam, I mean, uh, this guy from Sam is my, <laughs> is, Weda, 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 Weda is my, my, my colleague because he's a Jubilee man. But I want to buy Sufuna more. I want to embrace him, Sufuna more than, than him. But with only one condition. If I'll see one day Sifuna telling Raila, Baba, you told us to embrace unity. Why are you not, why are you now changing? I will only buy and put that in my bank the day I'll see Sivuna not taking another 360 degree turn left. Simply because this because time, of... this time round, they have turned uh, uh, right. right. Now, are you going to take another 360 degrees left the moment Raila will say you, this? You cannot Just remove the option of no, changing no, minds, no, surely. No, no, no. No. As human beings, we but must always see, retain. What, what, now, what we're talking about, circumstances see, determine. Galele, <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. I want to see people in Wakambani understanding. When they see Motambu talking about prosperity in Wakambani, they don't see Jubilee. They see the sense what I'm talking about. All right, not gentlemen, party. we are... The same thing. We, let, let, let see, see Wada in, in the same of what is advocating, not the party is standing. All right. Uh, this is the point. We'll have to wind on. up right there. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Joe Mutambo, <laughs> former member of parliament, Wingi Central, Ambrose Weda, advocate of the High Court, and Edwin Sifuna, who's the secretary general for ODM party. I'll bring in Zinzi at this point just to wrap it up for us. Interesting conversation that you had there, Michael. For those who are just joining us, here is an ego view of that conversation. Some Something that um, Sifuna had said that post the handshake issues have actually not been swept but are being put on the table. Honorable Mutambo said that if it wasn't for the handshake or Baba calling for reconciliation, would we be as a nation still reconciling? And was the handshake a matter of the heart? Ambrose Weda, advocate um, of the High Court, for him he said that uh, political goodwill should be on the table and looking into the future is what our leaders need to do. Let's take a quick commercial break. This is Money Express. We'll be right back. <laughs>